Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on Sunshine Report. I am Jane Aino. Governor Oluwari Timiakere Dulu says his administration will continually transform the state with various infrastructural facelifts for the benefit of the people. The Onyari Bulem Shagari Rese flyover is one of his promises to the people of the state and when completed will be the first flyover in the state capital. Commissioner for Infrastructure, Lands and Housing, Raimi Aminu, and his entourage, while on an on the sports visit to the project site, said ongoing construction of the flyover and junction improvement project will address incessant carnages, facilitate smooth flow of traffic, and eliminate long queues of vehicles while adding to aesthetic beauty of the area. Government House correspondent Olumide Adeluoye reports that the commissioner appealed to owners of properties acquired in order to pave the way for the construction to see it as a sacrifice in the overriding interest of the public. When completed, this will be the second flyover constructed by Akere Dulu administration following the Ore Redemption Bridge in Ore, with the local government area. Infrastructure, Lands and Housing Commissioner Raimi Aminu disclosed that the state government has paid over 300 million naira as compensation to about 57 claimants whose properties fell within the right of way in order to give way for the project. He explained that the Land Use Act 1978 vexed the ownership of lands in government and the market value of any land is not considered according to the Act. Aminu explained that the construction of the flyover became imperative due to the frequent losses of lives occasioned by incessant accidents and traffic gridlock along the road corridor. According to Land Use Act 1978, we supported and said at that time that uh, government can pay for lands. Lands belong to the Almighty God and to, to government. So during the valuation exercise, we do not value anything with lands. So, and the uh, total money paid and compensation for this as is just about 600 meter length. Total money paid for the compensation is over 300 million naira. Over 300. And the claimants, about 50 something claimants. And from the 50, about 56 or 57. And from the 57, we have properties belongs to government there. And some of those properties are shops and shanties. While describing the configurations of the bridge, Aminu said the bridge superstructure comprises a 12-meter carriageway, nine spans of 15-meter bridge with a 30-meter mid-span pre-stressed beam spanning across the federal highway. The commission assured that the project would be completed in less than 18 months. The middle span is 30 meter, and the 30 meter is not going to be a normal beam; it will be a pre-stressed beam, like the one we had, we have in Norway. And apart from that. It transfers over a major road, major highway, which is to Ibadan and to Pine Aziz. And that, that uh, major highway was taken into consideration when designing. Because in future, if there's room for, if there's need for, for dualizing the major highway, that means that this bridge that we're constructing now, there won't be need to demolish it. We've taken those ones into consideration. And apart from that, we are we have taken the water control into consideration. That's why we're having a major bus cause right here. Because we are controlling all the all the all the run of air. Earlier, the project engineer for the Oyarubulem Shagari Eraser Flyover and Junction Improvement Project, Tosin Adebayo, said the team has been on site for three months, but we are unable to mobilize reasonably until about four weeks ago. We are trying to ensure that every other works that needed to be done ahead, like the covert work and some other preliminaries, that we make the construction of the bridge work along the axis to be fully in place without delay is being done. Presently at our back there we have a 40 meters covert, 3 by 3 covert that we are doing, single cell, and uh, we have been able to do, do the 50 percent of that part of the covet. Addressing the team, Oba Hamid Saka of Iresa Community and Oba Peter Adeleye of IE Community appreciated the state government for the project. The monarchs appealed for a seamless construction of the Iresa and IE Road to boost transportation activities and farm produce.
o lumide a deluoye o esao se news. And away from that, Nigerians have continued to react to the call for a bill to prompt Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAMB, increase the validity period of its Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, results. Those who lent their voices in Accra Edundo State's capital came up with divergent opinions on the matter. Omoriola Ubeji has the detail. Over the years, millions of Nigerians have searched for the unified tertiary matriculation examination to gain admission into higher institutions of learning, after which the results would become useless if no admission was secured. In 2016, Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAM, contemplated extending the validity period of its UTME results to three years, an idea which has never seen the light of day. Recently, a lawmaker representing a Kitty North One federal constituency, Akintunde Rotimi, tabled the bill at the 10th Assembly expressing concern that the UTME result is valid for just one year and stressing that it is worrisome that the result becomes useless for candidates who cannot secure admission into any tertiary institution of their choice in the concerned academic year. The bill, which has now scaled through the second reading at the Green Chamber, wants Jump to have rethink so as to meet the global standard. Prayers that I have on this motion is number one to urge the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board to rethink and allow its results to be valid for three years. Reacting, an educationist, Stephen Ojo, frowned at the decision insisting that all stakeholders must sit and put other levels in the education sector into consideration before embarking on any policy. If not because the economy is so bad, and unfortunately I put it is that our government don't seem to have much time and emphasis on education. There's no need for it. By the time you do it three, three years, what is WAIC doing? What will NECO be doing? What is GSS today? Primary what will they be doing? Those are the stakeholders on that line. Call them, plan together. By the time you plan three years for jump at the top, that is the highest level of education in Nigeria. What happens to primary six? Are you going to plan for three years? Why three years? GSS three, three years. GSS two, three years. That's what I said. Allow all the stakeholders to meet. Sit down together. What are we going to do? Not jump alone. In the same vein, Chairman, academic staff of junior secondary schools on the state chapter, Sajudin Palugu, believes in the yearly conducted of UTME, saying, until government makes concrete decisions that will improve the education sector, no policy will work. They are just trying to make policies that are not uh, realistic and, at, at, and in some cases to favor some particular group. If jam is done once a year, it is enough. Is it the, the, you want to do it twice a year in a system where uh, lecturers will go on strike, government will not uh, be too serious in attending to their issues? Where, where in the, we are in a country where the last one, eight months, students were at home. Then if you now do the jam and give them admission, where are they going to be admitted into? So the facilities are not. My, my suggestion now is that it should still remain at once a year and whoever gains admission that particular year and refuses to use it should lose it however a parent ali monebi threw his weight behind the national assembly bill and said the risk associated with the annual exercise is enormous i believe it's one of the beasts that should gladden the hearts of every parents uh, in the first place the bill doesn't contradict the extant law of jump and in seco secondly it will save the parents of uh, having the having to register their awards every year as it stands speaker of the house of representative sajudin abbas said an ad hoc committee would be constituted to interface with the federal ministry of education to ensure compliance omoriola hungiji osrc news in the meantime, lynching, also known as jungle justice, is an 
abhorrent act of violence and hate and continues to plague society, necessitating a robust legal framework to address Hence, Nigeria must take a uni united stand against this inhumane act and ensure the general public is better sensitized and the act criminalized. A former Chief Press Secretary to Rondo State Military Administrator, Shola Akinuli, made the statement appealing for urgent action in passing comprehensive anti leaching legislation to prevent the heinous crime. According to Mr. Akinuli, the anti-lynching law would provide a clear legal definition of the crime, helping law enforcement agencies to accurately identify and prosecute perpetrators and as well, as, and as well act as a strong detriment deterrent against potential offenders. The social commentator and public analyst posited that following much needed legislation deterrent and preventing acts of jungle justice would begin to heal the wounds of the past and foster a society built on respect for humanity and due process. He added that passing the legislation would demonstrate a commitment of National Assembly to address historical injustices and take proactive steps to rectify them, noting that the legislation will reaffirm government's commitment to upholding fundamental human rights, inspiring hope and change at home and abroad. Management of Okitipupa Oil Palm PLC has advised residents of Ondo State and well-meaning Nigerians to disregard the widespread insinuation being circulated by a certain Olushegun Ayeri regarding his indebtedness to Okitipupa Oil Palm PLC and the termination of his license contract to harvest fruits from the company's plantations following his refusal to pay his debt to the company. As a law abiding corporate establishment, Okitipupa Oil Palm PLC states clearly that the company is appealing to the ex parte order immediately before a court of appropriate jurisdiction. While appealing to other debtors not to follow the route of unsubstantiated black, blackmail, the company said it shall employ all legitimate means at its disposal to protect its assets, human resources, and corporate image. It therefore insisted that all licensees who com complied with its standard operating procedures are free to operate without fear of harassment, molestation, or intimidation from any quarters, just as it's submitted that whoever comes to equity is duty-bound to come with clean hands. The federal government has told the Nigerian Labour Congress that it is legally restrained from embarking on planned nationwide strike against the hike in the price of petrol and the high cost of living in the country. NLC had given the government a seven-day ultimatum to reverse all what it called anti-poor and insensitive policies of facing nationwide industrial action. However, reacting to the ultimatum, the permanent secretary at the military Ministry of Justice, J.D. Aba, in a statement said the union was restrained by the order of the nation, National Industrial Court from embarking on any strike regarding the removal of petrol subsidy. She said the court had on June 5 granted an injunctive order restraining the NLC and Trade Union Congress from embarking on the planned industrial action or strike of any nature, pending the hearing and the de determination of the pending motion on notice. J.D. Alba advised the union to explore other means of negotiations with the federal government rather than resorting to self-help and undermining the orders of the court. 
And on sports, CAC Grammar School Accra will take on Estate High School in the first semi-final of L and B football competition for secondary schools in Accra South and Accra North Council area of Ondo State. CAC edged out Ijakbu Secondary School on penalties in the quarterfinal, while Estate High School shut out Olu Shola Secondary School 1-0. In the second semi-final, St. Daniel will take on Eluiju Comprehensive High School. Former Ondo State Secondary School champions, St. Daniel College eliminated Akure Secondary School's commercial school, while Oyemekun Grammar School fell to Eluiju in the last eight. Both, both ties will be decided at the soccer field of Aquinas College, Akure. The football competition is in collaboration with Ministry of Education. And that will be all on Sunshine Report. Thank you very much for watching. Good afternoon.